Welcome to the Harshi Podcast with myself, January Harshi. And Brandon. Uh, we are coming to you kind of late today, but that's okay. We have a new, I guess, routine and groove we've been doing with our family. People ask me all the time, how do you balance it all? And I always ask back, who told you I balanced anything? <laughs> but it's a constant progression and journey. So uh, we're working in the afternoons. Uh, so anyways, we're here and we're going to talk uh, a little bit more about juicing. Yes. Because a lot of questions have popped up from my recent social media posts and our last week's podcast on my journey, my first five weeks journey in healing my gallbladder, my digestive system, and how juicing has played a huge role in that. Uh, but before we get into that and, you know, any follow-up comments and answering people's questions, is there anything we need to talk about or announce? Well, we are having a 30% off sale on <laughs> all Team No Sleep shirts this yes. week. That's right. We're moving them out. Right. To make space for a couple of new items for Black Friday, Cyber Monday. Yeah. So just go to our website, selflovegeneration.com and the Team No Sleep Raglans are 30% off. That's really just until they last. So yes. we won't be replacing these, at least not anytime soon. And one of my favorite shirts, actually, I wear them all the time. They're very comfortable. Especially when I'm traveling. Something else I wanted to say is I, I've talked about on the podcast, I think last week and then on social media, how next year we're only doing one domestic and one international conference. But this is after the current Find Your Village cities. Yes. That doesn't mean any of the current cities are canceled or not happening. It just means after this tour is done, I'm not going to be going to 30 something <laughs> cities <laughs> next year uh, anymore. So, and by current you, current tour, we mean you know the final one being Ottawa in April, right? Because those were rescheduled um, due to my health, which is yes. what we're following up on in this podcast. So, uh, after last week, uh, and you guys, thank you for the outpouring of love and support. When I've posted about being sick over the last few years. Most people have been supportive. I've had a few comments of people just, why don't you get it removed? And this is dangerous and you're stupid. <laughs> 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 anyway, so I really appreciate all the support and me doing things my way because I definitely support you guys in doing things your way. It's a really beautiful thing when that happens. And, uh, you know, even if I were to need surgery, which I don't think is going to happen, but even if I did, I think that what I'm doing right now would only benefit me either way. So yes. Uh, yeah. And I really just don't care what anybody's mother's cousin's brother's girlfriend is doing. I just, I don't care. <laughs> I just, <laughs> that's not, they don't have my body and my life and my situation. So I just, I really good, good for Susan, but uh, that's not me. I'm January. So <laughs> <laughs> now what about their dad's Stop aunt's <laughs> cousin's daughter? No, still don't care. Okay. I really right. don't care. I just had to make sure. No, and me sharing my journey is not a judgment on anyone else's journey. I totally support people making different decisions than me and what's best for them. So, I will say that uh, I was talking about how it's affected working out and my health positively. But one thing I forgot to mention was how when I finish with my workouts now, I, I come home and I make myself a juice, usually celery juice. And I'll, I'll throw in an orange bell pepper in there for my eyes, like I talked about last week. Uh, before, I would come home and I would have something with sugar to replenish the glucose that I used up in my workouts. And then I would have like a protein shake. Uh, what I do now is I come home, I make a juice, and I wait a little while. Then I'll, I'll either eat a meal or maybe have a, you know, mix up some protein with some water. We have a Veggie Elite protein from MRM. And that, that's what I do. And my recovery has been way better. I'm so much less sore. I, I'm able to heal a lot faster. Two days after my workout, I'm typically pretty sore uh, after blitzing myself in the gym. And it lasts a few days. So I'm looking at about five days of soreness usually. And I haven't had hardly any soreness. Now, when I do squats, that's a different case altogether. <laughs> there's just no avoiding. I was about to call you out. Yeah, there's no avoiding <laughs> soreness in your quads when you squat. That, that's just... Just the way it is. But with everything else, it's been 
really great. And I've noticed it mostly after when I deadlift. I'm usually pretty sore. My pelvis feels out of place. I need an adjustment uh, pretty shortly after deadlifting, but it's been almost non-existent, the issues I've felt with my pelvis and uh, lower back muscles after I deadlift now. So some pretty amazing stuff. What I have found interesting, uh, just like when we went vegan two and a half years ago, and you were vegan, strictly vegan for two years of that, how shocked you were by the amount of muscle you gained being vegan, right? Because there's this misconception that you don't get enough protein and you need animal protein, especially if you're bodybuilding or powerlifting. And you found in just your personal life that that was not true. And you would not have ever thought otherwise unless you had that experience yourself. And so it's neat to see now the reaction you're having to adding juice into your diet because you would have never thought that juicing would help with muscle recovery and you've dropped uh, quite a bit of uh, fat, which I th- I think is funny to even say that because you're, you know, you're not seen as being overweight or whatever, but you have mm-hmm. and, uh, and it's helped with your eye and it's been helping with both of our mental health as well. And so it's kind of neat to see your reaction and what you're noticing in the changes because you weren't even this wasn't even on your radar and you weren't, you know, with juicing and you weren't expecting any changes. So as you've seen results and change happening in your mental and physical health and with your workouts and, and you think you were worried about losing strength because you were like losing fat, but you know, you've been gaining muscle still and you're actually getting stronger again. So it's been really neat to just observe and watch the changes that you've been having because you weren't expecting them and you weren't looking for them and then to kind of see your reaction to them. It's been really interesting. Yeah, absolutely. And typically I'll have three juices a day, uh, sometimes two, but I try to make it three. And because of that, I I eat less meals. And so I'm eating maybe three meals tops, whereas before I was eating four to five. Mm -hmm. And yeah, I've, I've dropped 25 pounds in the last several months. I went from 248 to now I'm about 223. Yeah, my my squats, I'm doing numbers that I haven't actually ever done before. And I'm getting my deadlifts back up to where it was. And my bench press hasn't even really lost anything at all. It's about the same as it was. Mm-hmm. And this is what's taken a break for a while. So uh, it's it's been pretty, pretty exciting. Another thing I noticed today is I was having some issues with cracked heels. I know <laughs> some other people listening probably do too. And... Uh, my right heel had a pretty bad fissure in it. I say fissure because it was a pretty deep crack. And uh, I looked down today and I went to feel my heel and there's nothing there. There's maybe a remnant of a, a crack there. My Both my heels are almost completely smooth now. And this wasn't even the case a week ago. Right. Because uh, I've, I've been juicing religiously like that probably for about three, maybe four weeks. Yeah, it's really neat because... That does happen. Like, you know, I started doing this because I was in severe pain and I was going to need to get my gallbladder removed and I was affecting my pancreas. But I talked about this a little bit last week. There's so many other changes that happen. Like my, my hair, I noticed t- this morning, my hair when I was brushing it out is just thicker and, uh, just doing much better because I lightened it recently and that is a brutal process on your hair. And I noticed that changed the consistency of my hair and it's doing so much better. And my skin has been healing. And like I said last week, my the hemorrhoids I was suffering from are gone. And um, there's just, there's I'm sleeping better. So yeah, there's all these other changes that you don't expect. And it's really <laughs> because I'm putting in a bunch of micronutrients and fruits and vegetables in my body that I just wasn't eating before. And here's the thing about a vegan diet. A vegan doesn't equal healthy. It just doesn't. It doesn't. Like, sugar is vegan. Uh, you know, donuts are vegan, you know, alcohol is vegan. Uh, so we get so caught up on labels, but it's like, how are you feeling? And are you thriving? Are you feeling run down and sick? And so a few months ago, I was vegan. And now I am I'm still vegan. But my diet is drastically different. You know, and so I right now I really relate to just plant based. And I and not all people who eat a plant based diet are vegan, but I am. Uh, and so, you know, plant based and I've kind of naturally have fallen into an 80, 10, 10, uh, lifestyle. And that was, I didn't even know what that was. So it wasn't something I was striving for and I'm not huge into labels, but, um, that is just basically where I've ended up. So, you know, 80% carbs, 10% fat, 10% protein. And, uh, people are like, well, where do you get protein? It's like, 
plants, brah. Like, <laughs> you know, like, I mean, they're in plants. Yeah, I know. I, I've, I don't track my calories every day. Being someone who's been addicted to food and have had, you know, struggle with my weight and, and dieting in that mindset for so long. And I've come so far with loving myself. I learned to love myself at my, at my highest weight. Like I talk about, uh, that's just not something I want to get into the habit of doing weighing all the time or counting my calories every day because it just becomes a set obsessive. And then I won't be doing what I'm doing for the right reasons. Like I'm doing what I'm doing to feel healthy. Uh, not to be a certain weight or be a certain size. So I don't track my calories every day, but I would say like twice a week, I'll put in my calories just to kind of check on myself. And I am consuming on average 1500 calories, which a few months ago I would have thought was crazy. Like that would have been too low for me. Um, but, uh, and about 80% carbs, 10% protein and 10% uh, fat. And that, that obviously fluctuates by the day. I mean, it might be 1700 calories in one day. I don't know. Like I said, I'm not, I'm not trying to eat a specific amount of calories. The thing is, is people ask me like, aren't you hungry? And it's no, I'm really not. You know, when you're putting so many nutrients in your body and then you guys, I'm not having 800 calories a day. I'm having, you know, 15, 16, 1700 calories a day. And if I was still hungry, I would make another juice and have 1800 calories. I don't know. I, you know, uh, I'm not hungry. I'm not physically hungry. And the thing about doing something like this is you learn the difference between being physically hungry and emotionally hungry. And uh, Brandon's over here nodding his head at me because he's heard me talk about this like every single day. This is quite a journey for me right now. Um, so, you know, being emotionally hungry is a whole different thing. That's when like, you know, you want to eat because you're sad or stressed out or depressed or angry or traveling or everyone else around you is eating and you want to eat it too, or you're smelling something or you see an advertisement for something that's all emotional hunger and emotional eating. Physical hunger is something that actually many of us probably don't truly experience very often, at least not in our country. I'm not saying any of you listening have not felt that because I have too. I have been pregnant and hungry and broke and homeless. So, um, but for the most part, most of you probably listening don't experience serious physical hunger uh, regularly. So, you know, that's, uh, if I'm starting to feel hungry, I make a juice or I eat something, you know, so I don't, I don't go hungry. People think I'm going to be so hungry. And if you're hungry, eat, make another juice or whatever it is you're doing. Uh, the emotional side of it has been a whole different thing. And most of the time I'm good. And if I, if I'm at home, I'm good. But when I'm traveling or gosh, the other day I made our kids avocado toast, which is like one of the best things in the entire world. And I wanted it so bad. And I bought the best bread possible with like ancient greens and organic. And uh, there's this company called, I think it's One Seed, One Purpose. Anyways, you know, you go to the website and they have the actual farmers, like the actual source where they get their stuff from. So, you know, I've got this really great bread and I had just talked myself into it being okay for me to have some avocado toast. And I pulled Brandon aside, I pulled you aside and was like, I need to talk this out. And we talked it out and we talked about, I'm actually not worried about the bread affecting my gallbladder or digestive system too much at this point, if I just have a little bit, but I'm worried about it affecting inflammation in my body and actually mental health, my mental health, anxiety. And by the time we were done talking, I was like, you know, I'm just, I'm not willing to compromise on my health anymore because of an emotional need. And so you made me a massive juice last night. It was so good. What was in it? It was pineapple, apples, kale, parsley, ginger, lemon, and mint. And mint. So good, guys. And he made me a huge, huge thing of it. And I sipped on that for quite a while. And uh, I was really frustrated. Mm -hmm. I was angry and frustrated. And I'm very open about how I feel. And And you know what? After I made the choice to not give up on myself and to keep doing what I knew my gut was telling me was the best for me, when I drank the juice, uh, I was proud of myself and I felt better. And those frustrating, angry emotions went away. They go away, you guys. Instead of not feeling, instead of trying to not feel things, you know, with food or whatever it is for you where you try not to feel your emotions, we need to make space to just feel them. So I can still choose to drink the juice and not have the bread. And I don't have to try to make myself not feel frustrated or angry or resentful. Just allow myself to feel those feelings, drink the damn juice anyways, or whatever it is. And 
you move on, you get through it. I think by trying not to feel is where we kind of fall into this trap of, you know, emotional eating or, you know, whatever vice it is that you have. So allow yourself to feel what you're going to feel. Don't try to cover it up or, or forget about it with some vice that is only going to get you more of what you don't want you know, do what's going to get you more of what you do want. And it seems like the harder choice in the moment, but it, it's, uh, it gets you more to where you want to be and what your goals are. So anyways, that's what I've been experiencing the difference in emotional hunger and physical hunger, physical hunger, ain't no thing, no big deal. I just eat something. It's the emotional hunger and the emotional eating, um, aspect that it's like, Oh damn. (laughs) You know, I think that affects a lot of people. I mean, it affects me and in the last two and a half, the last time I've had uh, an in and out double double or a greasy New York style <laughs> right. pepperoni pizza was well over two and a half years ago. And the last couple of weeks, those two things have been sounding amazing. Yeah. See, I didn't have these emotional yeah. cravings very much when I was just eating a vegan diet because I could still eat things that would fulfill those emotional yeah, cravings. That they kind of resembled those things. Yeah. You can still have sugar or alcohol right. or, you know, flour or whatever. You can still fulfill yeah. those emotional cravings. But when you you really switch to a plant based diet, you clean things up Ooh, like true man. clean eating. You're not having any of these substitutes, right. and then it's like holy crap! Shit gets real. Yeah, it gets real. Like <laughs> shit gets real, y'all. Okay. Like oh, I need some <laughs> grease and cheese and pepperoni right now. Yeah, yeah. But and is it hard? I would say for me, ninety percent of the time it hasn't been. Like I've been saying, pain is a huge motivator. Yes. And yes. I feel very, very satisfied physically <clears throat> and. Well, always with what I, all different ways with what I'm eating right now. But yeah, there's like 10% of the time when I'm smelling something out in public or the kids are eating something I'm not eating, or I just think of, you know, a memory or something that I'm like, damn, you know, I would want that. And, and, lo- and logically, like if somebody set a pepperoni pizza in front of me, I actually, that's disgusting for me and I would not want to eat it personally because of a few different reasons and a few different beliefs I have. But emotionally, without it sitting in front of me, I'm like, I really want that macaroni pizza, <laughs> you know? Yeah, yeah. Yeah, it's totally emotional. Absolutely. Yeah, it's really fascinating, actually. It's really, it's really interesting, the difference of it. But can I just say, because you're talking about all these changes and how you're juicing, that it is really cool to be the one who is affecting what you're eating yeah. and your physical health. Because usually in our lives, it's been the other way around. So that's yeah. been really, really fun for me to see you and all of the kids make really awesome choices and want more fruits and vegetables and want juices and more green smoothies than before. And, uh, you know, it's, I don't know, it's neat. Like, I feel really happy about that. Yeah, well, you know, you're, you're getting healthier, you're feeling better, you're happier in less pain. You're just doing better all around. And so mm-hmm. it's one of those things where you're leading by example and thinking, well, hey, I, I know all the benefits of juicing. Well, why don't I start doing some juicing? And then, oh, well, one juice is great. What happens if I do two? I'll probably feel that much better. Oh, well, let's try three a day. Right, right. And just goes on from there. And as opposed to years ago when I, I kind of led us into this change, I was a little bit pushier about it and not quite leading by example but you didn't really apply the you do you boo philosophy no i I, (laughs) no no, i was like you do you boo and i do me be (laughs) (laughs) that doesn't make sense no it doesn't (laughs) no you were more like everyone's doing what i say they're doing yeah yeah. that's what you were like let's just let's just be real well i was reading research and books and studying all that stuff and being in chiropractic school you get into yeah I mean, I clean, we cleaned up our diet. We started doing, that's when we got our Vitamix and our juicer, Jack Lane juicer. Yeah. And yeah. we started making smoothies and eating a lot more produce. We shopped a lot at Costco and Whole Foods and all that when we could, or, you know, afford it. And we ate very, we weren't vegan, but we ate very plant based, uh, very little meat. We were very vegetarian, only raw dairy. I walked every day with the kids. I mean, we got healthier. I lost 95 pounds. Yeah, yeah. You know, so that was before we got pregnant with our third. And um, so they were positive changes. But uh, yeah, it was a little forced. <laughs> 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 there might have been some frustrated emotions happening yeah, during that time. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah, but they were, it was good. It was really good. I swear it turned into like a part-time job for me, though. I was driving to farms and doing all sorts yeah, of stuff. But yeah. let me get into answering some of your questions, uh, more of your questions, I should say. Uh, let me tell you what I typically am juicing and eating in a day. 
So I'll get up in the morning and I will have coffee. I still drink coffee. Uh, and I will, we have a big bag of organic coffee. Uh, and I put in a little bit of almond milk. I try to get cold pressed almond milk when the budget allows. If not, I get, you know, a different almond milk. And this is what I talk about. Like this whole experience is teaching me to be extreme. I say that in air quotes and not give up on myself, but to also not be so all or nothing that I don't do it. If that makes sense. So anyways, I'll have my coffee with a little almond milk. I don't use sugar or sweeteners anymore. So I don't even use stevia or anything. I thought that I wasn't going to like that, but I've gotten used to it. And I tried stevia in a coffee a little bit ago and I didn't like it. I didn't think it did anything for it. So I thought that was kind of funny. Uh, I still like stevia. Yeah, I know you do. Don't tell anyone. (laughs) So uh, a little bit of coffee. Uh, Lately, I, I might have a banana if I'm craving one or a mango or something like that. We have any, uh, and then I have a juice and, uh, our kids love to help make the juices. So I'll have a juice usually after I've had coffee and like a piece of fruit and a juice, I'm good for the morning. And then for lunch, I might do another juice or I might do some raw wraps, which I've posted about basically lots of veggies. And if I have any wraps that I've bought off Amazon, great, but they're kind of expensive. So most of the time I use lettuce leaves or nori seaweed sheets. The dressing will depend on if I want fat in my lunch or not. And so I might just do some marinated mushrooms and soy sauce and nutritional yeast. I might use a little bit of this wild brine kimchi spicy sauce I have that's zero fat. Or I might do like some raw tahini and lemon juice. Usually my fats are that or avocado. Anyways, so I might do some raw wraps and then I'll have another juice in the afternoon. For the last week or week and a half, I was having baked potatoes. Actually, it's the only cooked food I've been eating. And I put on some homemade pico and homemade marinated mushrooms. So it was a zero fat meal. But I decided last night to cut those out because I was waking up in the morning feeling down and kind of depressed. And I realized I needed to cut out potatoes and have more orgasms. So uh, <laughs> orgasms are good. <laughs> I mean, I'm not, don't ask me how I came to that logic, but those, <laughs> that's what I decided I needed to do. So, uh, I've cut those out for now, at least not so often. I was becoming too dependent. on them. <laughs> he la- He's over here laughing, like still laughing at me that I said I needed to cut out potatoes and add more. Orgasms. So if you cut out potatoes last <laughs> night and you're adding in orgasms, does that mean... <laughs> Um, I was becoming too dependent on having those starchy potatoes every night and uh, I wasn't feeling good. I was feeling a little more weighed down, heavy, you know, it's like this heavy feeling and I was feeling more depressed. I ate your potatoes last night. He did eat them and they were really good. Yeah. Yeah. That Uh, wasn't the only thing I ate. So (laughs) no, (laughs) no, you didn't. (laughs) You, oh my God. (laughs) (laughs) <laughs> oh this is, has gotten so off track it's not even your face is so red right now <laughs> <laughs> her face is beet red right now it's as red as the beets you juice <laughs> Woo! Oh, let me fan myself here it's Woo! getting hot in her <laughs> no, just, can we turn off your microphone <laughs> Oh my gosh. Whew. So anyways, last night I just had juice for dinner. But uh, <laughs> <laughs> so lately I've been having three to four juices a day and one to two small meals um, and sticking pretty much with uh, low fat raw vegan. And um, uh, I posted about this on those crazy vegans, but the the raw oatmeal that we've made, we've been doing them, soaking them overnight. So I'll post more about that. Uh, this week, Miss New York and I are going to make some and make some posts about it. But yeah, so that's typically I'll have some fruit in the day, a couple juices, my coffee, a kombucha, uh, and I'll have one or two low fat raw meals or one of them I might have my fat for the day in it. And I'm, you know, most days I'm getting between, I mean, on average, I'm getting like 50 grams of protein, to be honest. You know, you were saying in the juice last night, you calculated it because we made a really big one and we use a lot of greens. 
Yeah, I'd actually calculated the night before, and there was a, I just Googled a, a juicing calculator, and they just use numbers based on serving sizes uh, that are set by the FDA or something like that. And uh, <laughs> what are you laughing about over there? <laughs> I have nothing. I'm go trying ahead. to be serious here. Go, go on. And anyways, <laughs> this juice, it had something like 15 grams of protein approximately, uh, a few grams of fat, a bunch of carbs, obviously, because, you know, there is sugar and fruit. And it was in the thousands of percent of vitamin A, C, D, <laughs> and K. And it was almost 100% of uh, folic acid, magnesium, potassium was really high, calcium was really high. So, I mean, it's, it was a power-packed... Did uh, you say how much protein? Yeah, 15 grams. Okay, I was distracted. Sorry. <laughs> <laughs> distracted by what 15 grams of protein yeah in just in, in a juice yeah and and uh, and in your body uses it all it's not you know it's it's like badass protein let's yeah it's just going say. straight to the bloodstream straight to the muscles people are so obsessed with protein in this country and i'm like why don't you obsessed about not going to mcdonald's for dinner again then you can obsess about my yeah. protein and don't just, get me wrong just I to think dispel McDonald's that when when i did go vegan for the first time in 2015 uh, March 2015, I after a couple weeks, I, I tracked to see how much protein I was getting. And there was a couple days in a row where I was getting over 230 grams of proteins a, protein a day. That was way more wow. than what I was getting before. It's probably I went more vegan. than you needed. Oh, it was way more than I needed. Yeah. I realized I needed to stop eating so much. <laughs> and so I did for a while and then That's got into good. powerlifting and started eating a lot again. But mm -hmm. yeah, so... It's very easy to get protein when you're vegan. There, there's protein in plants. There's protein in fruits. Uh, there's protein everywhere. And so it, I think there's there's maybe four people total each year in the United States that are affected by protein deficiency. <laughs> so uh, it's next I to nothing. A, I had a flight attendant say, oh, well, they say that's not good for you because it's too much sugar and not enough protein. I'm like, first of all, who the hell is they? And second of all, it's not the same sugar as... The sugar they are talking about. And my protein's fine, bro. So uh, I, I, it's just really, it's fascinating the things we get caught up on. And I think a lot of times to make excuses not to make changes, but yeah. that's a whole other thing. All right, I'm going to move on. So that's typically what I'm eating in a day. Um, I'm asked a lot what juicer we have. And we started with a Breville Compact because it's what we could afford. We wore it out really fast, so we replaced it with an Omega, what's, is it J8006? Something, Something like that. Yeah, I cannot we got remember, it on actually. Amazon. We got them both on Amazon. Uh, we do get more juice with the Omega. The yeah, pulp's, it's quite the a bit. The pulp's drier. It is worth it, I would say. You, it's a little more prep time with, because you have to cut yeah. things smaller. Yeah. And it just, it goes at a slower pace, but yeah, the, the amount but, of juice is amazing. But don't let it, I mean, get the one that you want. There's so many debates over which juicer is the best. And I just, I just feel like, stop it. Like stop arguing, stop finding reasons not to do it and stop finding like reasons to argue. Uh, so somebody messaged me the other day and said she found a juicer for like, what she said, I don't remember what she said, $11 at oh Goodwill, gosh. and she replaced a few screws, and it's a Jacqueline juicer, and I'm like, oh, heck yeah. yeah, like, now she's juicing when she couldn't, you know, before, so, yeah. um, but I loved our Jacqueline juicer, I don't know if they still sell those or yeah, not, they do. but uh, the Breville's very similar to that. Our Jack LaLanne juicer lasted eight years. Yeah. We so. didn't use it as much as the Breville, though. No, we, we did use it a fair amount, I should though. probably contact Breville, considering that gave out <laughs> so fast. Uh, and then we could have two juicers, but we have the Omega now because when we were, when we were going to look up a juicer that would be better for our size family, we noticed that the Breville was comparable in price to the Omega. So we got the, you know, the Omega because it was, uh, we would get more juice out of it. So I wanted more bang for my buck when I bought greens and things yeah. like that. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, where do I shop? So I've shopped everywhere. You know, where there's sales at HEB's local store right here, Randall's, uh, and um, I've shopped at Whole Foods uh, and I just shop how the price, you know, I'll even get online and do like Instacart so I can shop at a couple of different places, but then I have to pay fees for that. So what we decided to do was to start going to Sprouts on Wednesdays because it's double ad day. 
And if you don't have Sprouts by you, then find a place that does something like this where they have great sales or you can buy produce that's like, you know, about to expire or um, they do like double ad days. So on Wednesdays, you get the ad prices, their sale prices from the week before and then the week upcoming. So uh, we recently did a huge shopping and honestly, we probably need to double it next time for our yeah, size family, yeah. but it was like 160 bucks. And we, I mean, filled the cart, we filled our counters and it wasn't all produce. You know, we had some like milk and we had some breads and we had a uh, big, a couple of big bags of frozen mm-hmm. fruit. So almond milk, by the way. Yeah. Almond milk. So, you know, people, and then people ask how much I spend and, you know, first of all, that's just really no one's business. <laughs> That's real. It's a really personal question. Uh, and I feel like if I answer how much I spend that, I just don't want to hear the comments about it. So you spend what works for your budget and people say, Oh, I wish I could afford to feed my kids this way. And it, it's like, you know, we're actually not spending any more money than we were before. Uh, we're actually starting to save money now that we're yeah. getting smarter about yeah. it because I'm not buying the same convenience foods as I was before. And when you're like, I don't know, when you're addicted to food or you've been homeless or you've been hungry, it's really hard to not have your pantry and everything completely stocked uh, and to have more perishable foods. But I've really been working on just working through that. And, you know, if we have tons of like apples or pears, if they're on sale, whatever, you know, cantaloupe or watermelon, the kids will eat that. They don't need the chips and they don't need the uh, chicken nuggets, which in our house is vegan, you know, nuggets. But um, so we're not buying a lot of the convenience foods we were buying before. And of course, we're not going out to eat that much. So we are not spending a lot more to eat this way. Uh, it's just different. You yeah. spend differently, you buy differently. And there's a little bit of an adjustment phase in there. Well, it's living differently. Yeah. Yeah. Because do, doing what you're doing, it's an it's an entire mm-hmm. lifestyle overhaul. Right. It's not a diet. It's not a temporary thing. This this is what you're doing to be a healthier person right. for the rest of your life. And that's the other thing too is I will say that's a two. There's a two part answer to this. The first is do what works in your budget. You don't have to buy all organic. Shop around for the sales and you as you adjust to it, you can find ways to eat this way within the current budget because you won't be eating other things. You'll be replacing those things. The second is I would go without other things at this point, you know, so it depends how much of a priority is in your life. And I'm not trying to be rude to call you out, but I'm going to be rude and call you out. Like what's a priority? You know, uh, we all, even when we're broke, we find money to spend on our vices and our things that we really, really want, whether that's Ben and Jerry's ice cream or cigarettes or, you know, going out for a drink with your friends or whatever it is. And I would go without other things. And I actually, we have recently, yes. you know, we've, we've canceled some things and appointments and other stuff, but, uh, you know, it's, it's a number one priority to me at this point. It does not come behind anything else because no. it's that important that I be healthy, not just for myself, but for my family. And this, of course, goes into self-care, uh, which if you haven't listened to that podcast, listen to it. So that's kind of a two-part thing, like make it a priority and then find a way to make it work within your budget and your family. Uh, so, yeah, that answers those questions. Um, something else that I'm asked a lot is what I do with, what I do with the pulp. <laughs> People are like really obsessed about what I do with the pulp. And I don't know why people are asking me this. I really don't. And I feel like maybe I need to make like a pulp shrine and like light a few candles. <laughs> I don't know. Like, uh, I don't, I'm, I think that people are asking for a few different reasons. I think some people are just curious, but you guys, I'm not one of these. I listen, my carbon footprint is really freaking small. Like we are a family of eight, but we live in an apartment. We drive one used vehicle. You know, our waste is as like pretty minimal for a family of eight. Uh, I buy recycled toilet paper and paper towels, basically, you know, and uh, just so many things that make our carbon footprint pretty damn good. We're vegan for, you know, for goodness sake, like uh, almost everyone in our family is vegan. So uh, I do not do anything magical with my pulp. I do not bake breads. I do not put it in smoothies for the children. I do not dehydrate it into crackers. I throw that shit in the trash. <laughs> like, I, don't, 
<laughs> like I don't, <laughs> I don't do anything with it. I, you know, I, th- I think the idea of doing something with it is wonderful. I also think the idea of cloth diapering is great, but you know what? I don't do it and that's okay. So do what you want with the pulp, make, <laughs> make raw crackers, make bread, put it in your smoothies. I, you know, compost, compost is great. And honestly, if we had a backyard, that's probably what we'd be doing. And I know some of you are like really hardcore, like, well, you can still compost in a bin on your counter. Well, good for you. But I have small counters and I'm not putting a compost bin on my damn counters. It's not happening. As it is, it drives me crazy that there's other stuff on my counters. So uh, no, uh, but uh, that's the answer to this question is I do nothing with it. I throw it in the trash. So if that ups my carbon footprint a little bit, I am going to just have to find a way to live with that. So you're a wasteful consumer is what you're I saying. I am a wasteful juicer. I know. I told you I don't fit into any labels. So for anyone that was trying to fit me in a label, like, I'm sorry, I just shattered your dreams. <laughs> <laughs> Oh my goodness. <laughs> there, there's going to be some unfollows <clears throat> on social care. media um, after this. You do, you, they do, <laughs> they can do them. You do you, boo. I tell people, you just lost a follower. I tell people, <laughs> Don't follow if if don't follow anyone that brings any negativity in your life or you don't like something. So that goes for me too. You know, if if I bring you down at all, unfollow me. <laughs> if my if me not having a pulp shrine or compost bin upsets you, oh my gosh, I I think people are just curious. Like, what do you do with the pulp? You know, and I you know I remember I really think in my twenties that I would have felt that I needed to do something with this pulp, you know. Um, but I'm 38 and I don't think I need to do shit with my pulp. So, nope. um, but like I said, if and when we move into a house, we'll probably yeah yeah, and then um, then you can follow me again. On a very small side note, with the Omega juicer, you actually get a little bit of pulp that makes its way through. So you have to filter it out if you don't yeah. want that in your juice. Yeah. If you don't care, then it's no big deal. Mm-hmm. With the Breville, you get no pulp in yeah, your juice. Yeah, we really didn't. It's just straight up juice. So <clears throat> yeah, keep so that in mind if, if that's a big deal to you one way yeah, or another. Yeah, we just filter it. It's no big deal. Um, okay, that's another pulp question. That's a pulp question. Okay, so uh, kid-friendly juice. She said... They've done green apple, kale, cucumber, celery, and ginger. ginger. What's another kid-friendly juice? So I think starting with apples, pineapple, or pears is good, and then build on that. And Absolutely. So, yeah, you can uh, add a little bit of kale. Uh, and you can – I just do apple and kale juice for some of my kids, you know, because I want them just to get those greens. I got this an idea from a juice place in Indianapolis, but you can make an apple, kale, spinach – you know, carrot juice and then put it in the blender with a little bit of ice and blueberries. Cause you're not going to juice blueberries y'all. Um, and put them in your blender or Nutribullet or Vitamix, whatever you have and blend it with some frozen wild blueberries and it will turn the color purple. This is how I used to make green smoothies for the kids. I would hide it with blueberries, the green, and you know, you can tell them that it's a, it's a yummy blueberry smoothie or it's a whatever. Skittle smoothie. It's a Skittle smoothie. Yeah, exactly. You know, so that's another idea. Um, maybe that will kind of get your wheels, turning a little bit um let's see other questions uh is juicing safe while breastfeeding well i think that fruits and vegetables are safe when breastfeeding obviously uh, i'm going to get technical consult with your physician or care provider before doing anything uh but i mean it's just fruits and vegetables would i go on a juice feast or a juice fast while breastfeeding solely probably not so, uh, but adding juice into your current diet, I can't see how that would be harmful personally. But again, you know, you know your body better than I know about your body and consult your doctor. But if I was breastfeeding right now, I would probably be uh, drinking a couple juices a day plus having a couple, you know, nutritious filling meals to keep my milk supply up. Actually, juicing might act- might help with milk supply, to be yeah, honest. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So, uh, what food was making me feel blah? It was potatoes. Do I like my new juicer, the Omega? Absolutely. I love it a lot. Was there a specific food that broke your br- Breville? Uh, I know. I think it was um, our family bee. <laughs> <laughs> Mass overuse. <laughs> <laughs> uh, my absolute favorite juice. My my favorite juices right now are the one that Brandon talked about earlier and then one that's called the to- Toxin Flesh uh, from Nectar. It's a juicing company, but it's apple, lemon, kale, 
parsley and lemon. That might be a variation of it. Did actually, you say ginger and ginger. Yeah, ginger's in it. Yeah, so I really, I usually start with an apple base because apples are an apple juice is really good for your gallbladder. But um, apple or pears, and then I build from there. Let's see how many calories you think you're getting a day. I answer that probably 1500, give or take. A raw vegan, you know, recommends at least 3000 per day. You do you, boo. You do you. I, but I'm not trying to get a certain amount of calories. I'm doing this, like I'm, I'm listening to my body. So if one day I have 3000 calories, great. If another day I have 1550, whatever, like I don't, I'm not looking, I'm not looking at that. So, uh, and I'm certainly not telling anyone else what else to do. I don't know. What knife is that in this picture? I don't know. I got it on Amazon Prime now. I don't remember. <laughs> Farberware. That's what it is. Is that what it is? Yeah. Thanks, babe. Thank you. Purple. Uh, let me see if there's any. It was the green one. Okay. Those are the most commonly yeah. asked questions. Those are the ones that you and I end up talking about a sure. lot. sure. Yeah, definitely. I think, Juicy, I think you just have to play around with it. We love lemon in ours. We love ginger. I love parsley a lot. Parsley is good. Mm-hmm. I, I, love I, I love to juice celery. <laughs> like I said, it's really good recovery juice. And then also it's yeah. it's great for its anti-cancer properties and uh, has a vast amount of electrolytes in it and it's very good for your digestive tract as well right. like if and i like if, celery ju- sorry go ahead. i was gonna say if you're constipated juice some celery and you will not be constipated for much longer <laughs> seriously it's it's that's about the best juice yeah. you can have. In for... the morning, have some coffee and then some celery juice or vice versa. Yeah. You're going to be good to go. I like celery juice just by itself. Yeah. And I just get it down. And, you know, when you first made me celery juice, I was like, oh, my gosh, there's just no way it's going to be so nasty. It's really not that bad. No. I like it cold yeah. and it's pretty mild. And I just get it down pretty quick. And uh, and it's, pre- it's pretty good. I do. I like it. And you know what? If you only have a back to the juicer, if you only have a blender, get a nut milk bag and you can literally make a smoothie and then you can strain it out of a nut milk bag. If you know this is too overwhelming for you, just start with green smoothies. Like, yeah. you know, just add in you guys, <clears throat> I knew that I was not eating a lot of fruits and vegetables because, you know, I was craving the sugar and the flour and the gluten and the wheat and all that. And so I knew I wasn't getting enough in and it's the first thing that goes out of my diet if I'm not being drastic if I'm not really being mindful. And so the amount of fruits and vegetables I'm adding back into my diet and into my body and all the vitamins and the nutrients and micronutrients is so incredible that my body, my, my body can't help but respond and to heal, you know? And so I'm not going to get caught up on if everything is organic or everything is juiced perfectly, or if it's strained or not strained, or if it's in this juicer that heats that up, up a little bit or not, or, you know, if it's a smoothie instead, like I just, I don't follow many like people, so vegans and raw vegans, and I don't know what other people are saying. I don't care what they're saying. I am just trying to heal my body and do what's best for me. And, you know, I think the reason why a lot of you are part of my online village, you know, part of my, my online communities is because of that, because I don't feel there is one right way to do things. I don't feel there's an ideal way to do things. I feel that we're all on our own journey. And and if you can add in good to your life for your mental health, your physical health, your diet, your lifestyle, your exercise and your movement, your sleep, whatever it is for you, do that and do it in a way that will work for you and for your family. You know, I, I have, I can't follow a lot of people because I feel like I can't relate like, oh, well, yeah, you don't have any children. So, you know, this or, you know, and it's not a judgment. It's just, I can't relate and I don't know if they can relate to me. And so I just hope that as I share this journey, that you can find it motivating and inspiring for you to make changes that are right for you because you can relate because, you know, I've been there or in a similar situation or, you know, you're not going to be judged if you do things differently. So just do it, do what works for you and, you know, find the recipes that work for you. And sometimes you just have to jump in and figure it out as you go, you know? Absolutely. Don't you think? Jump in both feet first. Mm -hmm. That's what we do. Start up and then make adjustments along the way. Pretty much. So I think that's most of the questions and, uh, that I wanted to answer and touch on and, I don't know if you had anything else on your list that you wanted to cover or not. No, I, I know with the juicing, I, I've been uh, sleeping a lot less and my sleep has been a lot deeper. Uh, that's 
that's a pretty important thing to me. I've had some significant struggles with good sleep. Mental health. Uh, and yeah, and mental health uh, issues throughout my life. And so being able to have a good night of sleep is very important. And I'm one of these people that if I could have my way, I would just do away with sleep and just not ever sleep because I like to be busy doing things. And mm-hmm. so being able to get a good night of sleep that's uh, maybe six hours tops and that's a deep six hours and then I feel energized for the rest of the day, that's mm-hmm. pretty exciting to me. So Right. Yeah, absolutely. Now I'm like, hmm, what juice am I going to make after we get off of here? <laughs> <laughs> I got to say, I am loving juicing pineapples and mint right now. Holy moly, that is oh, so good. So good. And I always hesitate on buying mint because, you know, I can get a bunch of uh, an actual thing of parsley for 50 cents but a little tiny bit of mint is 2.99 you know or whatever it is yeah dollar 99 2.99 so i always hesitate on it but man when i do buy the mint i'm so glad i did because it is so so good yeah (laughs) it's so good yeah and and try a juice with pineapple and mint in it it Mm -hmm. will blow your mind it is yeah and if you don't have an omega type juicer you have like a jacqueline or uh you know breville one of those kind of juicers you just put your greens in between like two you know a half cut apple or cucumber or whatever it is and put your greens in between stuff and i feel like you get more juice out of it that way that's just my experience with the omega it's you know we just put it in and and it's there's no like it's a, what's it called? A slow masticating. Masticating. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. 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 So it gets it out, uh, much better, but was it 80 RPMs versus 1500 RPMs? Something like that. But yeah. yeah, just, just, uh, get what you can afford. And like I said, if that's a Nutribullet or a cheap blender or juicer, or, you know, ask around, you'd be surprised how many of your friends or family have a juicer in the back of their cabinet that they bought on a whim and have never used. <laughs> That is probably I true. I bet you my aunt has three. <laughs> I bet you. She, she definitely, she might have four. Yeah. she de- Well, she has two treadmills in her family room. So <laughs> <laughs> I love her, but she has to have what everyone else has and, and every single like brand and style. So she probably, if we lived by her, I probably would have just been like, hey, can I have one of your <laughs> juicers? You should text her in a little bit. Hey, do you oh, have an extra gosh. Breville? When we, go, <laughs> when we go back for Christmas, you know I'm going to go look in her cabinets now and crack up when we find more than one juicer in there that oh, she's yeah, never absolutely. used. Yeah. <laughs> so ask your friends and family. Go to Salvation Army. Go to Goodwill. You know, there's no shame in, in just in doing that and taking care of yourself in any way that you can. You know, I got my favorite bread machine and my favorite crock pot for 5 and $10 at goodwill and that's how i fed my family when we had no money so yeah uh, i don't get caught up on what this raw vegan says and what this person says and what this needs to no just do what works for you and uh and you might not know what that is until you just jump into it and be like you know i really don't like this juice or gosh that ended up being kind of expensive and I was a little worried at first because I was spending money on juicing and then stuff to juice, produce to juice, and then we were still buying our normal grocery list. But that lasted about two weeks until everybody started wanting what I was having. Yeah. yeah. And it and it transitioned over. And so what I did in the beginning was is I just bought enough produce for two to three days. Again, not getting caught up in, I need enough for like a week for every single day. Oh my gosh, that's so stressful, you guys. Yeah. I, that would make me quit before I began. So I would just go to the store and say, okay, if I'm making five juices today, I would just, I really got enough for like two days, maybe two and a half at first. And then on that third day, I would go back to the grocery store and get a few things. And that's how I did it at first. And now it's more, we probably get enough for about four. I always think it's going to last a little bit longer, but maybe four days, maybe five, give or take, I don't know, in there. And, you know, I just adjust it as I go. And we're still figuring out our grocery list and how much to buy and the budget. And But that can also be part of the fun. Like, just go and see what's on sale, see what's in season, and and get that and enjoy it. Just just start by adding some. Yes. You know? Absolutely. I mean, not all of you need to go as drastic as I did or might not want to, but yeah. So I hope that answers a lot more of your questions. I know that we soon want to touch a little bit more on how it's affected us with mental health and some other things with that. But for now, that should answer most of your questions. I know I'm probably still going to get asked what juicer I have, where I shop, how much, and what I do with my pulp. (laughs) (laughs) Even though, 
even though I've already answered this so many times and now I've answered on the podcast, but there you have it. So, uh, all right. Well, I guess we'll, any other announcements before we go? I don't have any other announcements. No, I don't Do either. Mm -mm, I don't. So, uh, with that, we will see you next time. Adios. Adios.